Popeyes, Chick-fil-A. That's always the battle of the chicken sandwich. And to me, there's been no clear winner yet, at least from what I can tell from all the people that I survey, all the forums online, it just seems too up in the air. Now, in our last video, we beat the heck out of that Chick-fil-A crispy chicken sandwich. But I was totally honest about this fact. I am and always have been a Popeyes kind of guy. And I think I know why. First of all, their seasoning is fantastic. It's just such a well-rounded crispy chicken sandwich. But there's something that stands out unlike any crispy chicken sandwich I think I've ever had. And that's that beautiful crispiness. There's a really cool and simple trick that I'm going to show you to get that amazingly beautifully fried crispy chicken. It's actually very creative what they do to fry their chicken. But first, we got to go pick up a sandwich. So let's roll. So we are now headed over to Popeye's. Funnily enough, I was having a chill morning. I was like, this is perfect. It's not that far away. The Chick-fil-A took us like half an hour to drive there and this is gonna be some one mile away trip, whatever. Guess what? The Popeyes that we passed, literally one store before our Chick-fil-A, that's the one we're going to today. So this is our drive-through series. It has to be a drive-through and there were a million Popeyes. There's one to walk away from my apartment. But again, just for you, drive-through series, we're driving the 6.9 miles or whatever it is to go again to that Popeyes, right next to that Chick-fil-A. So I guess this is kind of good because you're really kind of comparing apples to apples here, right? You got the Chick-fil-A right next door to that, Popeyes, and I just feel like it's kind of fair that way. But let me talk a little bit about the Popeyes chicken sandwich as we head over here right now. So the thing about a Popeyes crispy chicken sandwich that is so fascinating to me is not only the seasoning, but it's the special thing they do with the crispiness on there. When you look at a piece of that Popeyes chicken, it's got this perfect crisp around it where it's sort of like these little tiny pieces coming all off the chicken, almost like something's kind of growing off of each piece in this really cool, unique way. It's like these crystals that shoot off of it. And each crystal is super, super crispy. It's this tiny little golden nugget that you can crunch on and get that extra texture and flavor. And so I think the way that they fry their chicken is levels above any other fast food restaurant. It's just not even close. And that's why I pick Popeyes every time with my eyes closed, no problem. Popeyes for the win every day. And to be totally honest with you, this is one of those restaurants that I actually get a little bit nervous facing off against because there's a really good chance their sandwich will just be a little bit better than mine. They've got it down to a T and think about how many of these things they've made over the years. I've probably only made a crispy chicken sandwich, what, 100, 150 times in my life. I'm competing against the millions and millions and millions of sandwiches they've probably made in the past. So it's gonna be a tough one, but we're getting close. I think it's up here around the corner. All right, so we've made it to Popeye's. The chicken sand is here, the chicken sandwich. It's a really freaking good sandwich as I talked about, but now it comes down to the test and we are literally sitting right basically across from Chick-fil-A. This is a battleground right here. We are literally in the dead middle of it. I have literally never in all my time coming through drive through seen a truck that big going through. Props to this guy for getting a sandwich. He knows what he wants, he's getting a sandwich. Shred it. Even the shredded truck is in line. Look how big that thing is. So Popeye's is a pretty simple menu obviously, but you know, it's it's, it's it's really good stuff. 10, two can dine, six piece tenders meal. I never get tenders here. I feel like you gotta be able to just pick up that beautiful crispy chicken sandwich. You gotta eat the sandwich itself. It's just fire. Surf and turf, no, no thank you. Not here. Hello, can I you? Oh yes, hi. Um, could we order please two spicy chicken sandwiches? Combo or just the sandwich? Oh, just the sandwich please. Okay, anything else? And then three of just the regular crispy uh, chicken, just 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 without the combo. Uh, two red beans and rice on the side, please. And then two biscuits, and that's it. Twenty-eight sixty-nine, please. Thank you. Twenty-eight. What was it? Twenty-eight sixty-nine. Thank you so much. How are you? Twenty-eight Yes. Thank you. Sorry, not much action going down here. What I like is that they're making the, the sandwiches fresh too, right? It's truly made to order. It's not quite fast food though. It's like medium fast. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I have a question too. This is way better than, than Chick-fil-A, right? Uh-huh. It's way better? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. I just need to confirm. I always test it. I always ask everybody, so. Okay. Thank, thank you so you much. Have a good day. So I don't know if you can see, but Chick-fil-A is way down there past that truck, past the McDonald's. This is where we were last time. So apples to apples here, people. This right here is gold. This is actual gold. I mean, they are fried to golden brown, crispy perfection, of course, but this I'm protecting with all my life here. And I like that that lady voted for Popeyes. I know she's a little bit biased, but she genuinely seemed, she seemed like such a cute, sweet lady and i appreciated her voting so i've never believe it or not had a biscuit from popeyes i'm also dangerously hungry right now i'm not gonna look at the camera or anything that's really good that's a good biscuit it's very dense but it's a good super hot biscuit i went to a really good restaurant the other day okay one of the first times that i've actually eaten out at a place 
since the start of COVID. And it's supposed to be one of the best restaurants in the country. I'm not gonna name what it is. I'll just tell you about it. All my critiques, I took a little notebook in the, into the restaurant. It's kind of hidden. I was just taking my own little field notes there because it was such a good place. All my notes for most of the dishes, they were fantastic, but they did not do a good job with temperature. And I think temperature and food, super, super underrated. It's a really important part of food that people don't think about a lot. Having food really, really hot and warm when it's supposed to be hot and having food really chilled and cold on ice. If you've ever tried to have an oyster when it's not over ice, it's not that good, it's not crisp. Temperature's important, they nail temperature in Popeyes. And just like that, we've secured the bag. Now this is a lot of Popeye's chicken sandwiches in here. That's a regular crispy, and that's the spicy with the S on there. Now the first thing I'm gonna say is that I like the bag that the Chick-fil-A came in better. It's one of those nice paper bags and it has a really cute, perfect logo on there. But at the end of the day, I actually care more about the sustainability aspect of it. So I don't know which one's more sustainable, but I'm guessing again that that goes with Chick-fil-A. Plastic's probably not the best. Now the couple other things that are in here are two packets of honey. It says Popeye's honey sauce, but if you flip it over, it really does just look like regular honey. I'm curious what honey sauce means. I don't know, give it a try. That's just regular honey. It's great honey though. Wow. Third ingredient in the high fructose corn syrup. Now right here I have red beans and rice. Someone long ago taught me that this was one of the go-tos at Popeyes. And at first I sort of laughed it off, thinking how can red beans and rice be that good? Oh, but let me tell you, it may not look good, but it is quite possibly one of the most well-seasoned things I've ever gotten at a fast food restaurant. It's completely unbelievable. So just hear me out, and next time you go to Popeye's, get the red beans and rice. But for now, it's time to open up one of our sandwiches. The fact that this was shoved into a bag, smushed around a little bit, and still looks like this, means that Popeye's is doing something right. Look how crispy and flaky all of that chicken is. That is what I'm setting out to replicate today. More of that beautiful chicken crisp sticking out on the edge here, and a beautiful, soft, fluffy brioche bun. I also like that they put a good amount of sauce on there. Props to them for that. But before we take a big, beautiful bite out of this sandwich, let's get started with our own so we can compare them head to head. We're gonna start out here by portioning and cutting our chicken. Now, as you can see, I'm using this board right on top of my main cutting board because I don't wanna get all that chicken all over the place. We'll flatten out our chicken so it's a nice flat piece and then cut that perfect sandwich size portion, making sure that it's all relatively even thickness. This piece is ready to roll. I'll do the same thing with this big boy right here, slicing that chicken breast right down through the middle and doing my best to get a few perfect sandwich portion pieces of chicken. Again, that's another gorgeous piece. Once our chicken's all set, we'll drop this into a bowl and then we'll go in with equal parts buttermilk and and pickle juice, which is my special trick for brining chicken. You'll notice this is the first thing that we're doing once we get home, just to really make sure that this brines for a while. I'm doing this even before we make our bread, so that goes to show you how tender I want this chicken. At this point, we're gonna let our chicken rest and brine for at least an hour or so, or until we need it. Now to make our bread, we're gonna start by making something called a tang zong. Essentially, it's similar to a roux, almost this kind of milky, floury solution here. That's gonna give us a really nice, light and fluffy bread. If you look at a lot of different brioche recipes, you'll see this used about 50% of the time. And I'm gonna test it out here today to see if it's worth it. To start, we're gonna go in with a quarter cup of whole milk and two tablespoons of water. Then once we turn on our heat, we're gonna whisk as we slowly sprinkle in two tablespoons of bread flour. Now over medium high heat, we're just just gonna let this stir until it's nice and thickened. You should see it get nice and gooey like this. And once it's in these clumps, you can set it aside. Now to make that bread, we're gonna start with three quarters cup of lukewarm whole milk. Then into that milk, we're gonna put two and a half tablespoons of sugar, which I'm gonna slowly whisk to try to let it dissolve. I like to think of the sugar as the food for the yeast. It's gonna let that yeast wake up a little bit, along with that nice warm heat that we provided with our warm milk. Finally, we're gonna add in a tablespoon of active dry yeast, whisking as we pour so that it disperses evenly. You don't wanna ever pour in yeast without mixing because it clumps up really easily and then becomes a huge pain in the rear. Now, we're gonna let this sit for about five minutes to wake up. Now, once our yeast has grown a little bit, we're gonna add in three and a half cups of bread flour and then just a small little pinch of kosher salt. And then we'll let this begin to whisk. Now once it slowly starts getting incorporated, we're gonna add in one full egg plus one yolk and let that begin to mix in as well. Really make sure to scrape down the sides of your bowl as we want everything getting as incorporated as possible. Now right here we have our sticky tang zong that we're then gonna scoop right into the mixture and try to let evenly disperse. And now after this, we're gonna slowly, bit by bit, crumble in about three tablespoons of cubed butter. This is where brioche gets that really buttery texture. Once you finish kneading this for about 10 minutes, remove your dough, then press it back to make sure it's nice and soft like this, or smooth as a baby's bottom as I like to say, and then drop it into a greased bowl. Now, I think you know the drill, but we're gonna cover it with a nice damp towel for about an hour and a half or so to let it rise a bunch. Now, while we wait for that dough to rise, we're gonna make a really easy aioli here for our sandwiches. And I know, I say easy all the time, but this time I actually mean it. 
going with a bunch of mayonnaise. I know we make just about everything homemade, but truthfully, mayonnaise is one of those things that I don't make homemade all that much. I just wanna be honest with you guys about it. It's easy to make, but why not just use it out of a squeeze bottle if it saves you that much time? Now, you could stop there. That's what they do at Popeyes. It's literally just mayo, but I'm gonna spice it up just a tiny, tiny bit. We'll first go in with just a little bit of lemon zest, which will give us that really nice light acidity that we all know and love in food. After that, just a tiny little sprinkle of salt and just a few freeze dried chives. Now we'll mix this up really well. And just like that, we got a thick creamy sauce that we can put on the bottom of each one of our Popeye sandwiches. Set this in the fridge for later. Now that our bread is risen, take a look at that beautiful thick dough. Normally I make it in a much smaller bowl and it oozes over the side and looks like this beautiful muffin. But today, we've kept it in a large bowl so it's not seeping all over the entire thing. Now, our first step here is gonna be to spray our bowl with just a little bit of bread flour. At which point, we'll pull this beautiful baby out, noting how light and fluffy this whole thing looks all across the bottom here, and plopping it down. Now, we'll shape it into a nice little log here, making sure that it's really easy for us to cut. Now, I'll come in with my bench scraper and divide this into equal pieces. It's looking here like I'm gonna make about eight buns from this, but you can definitely change this based on how large you wanna make them. Now, we've done this before, but we're gonna move them off to the side, clear out all the flour on the center of our cutting board, and then, taking one piece at a time, begin pinching in the bottoms of the dough to make it nice and smooth on the top. Once we've pinched all the way around the entire piece of dough, and it begins to sort of look like a soup dumpling, just like this, we're gonna to place that pinched part right down and roll it around on our board until it's nice and smooth and tight. You've created the perfect bun and it just needs to rise a little bit again, but it's ready to roll. Do this with the rest until you have a bunch of perfect buns. Now that we've got all our beautiful buns laid out, let's cover this up again for about 15, 20 minutes or so to let them rise up again. Then we're ready to bake. Now to start in our bowl with the chicken and buttermilk, once that's had plenty of time to brine, we're gonna add in a little bit of garlic powder, which always smells so incredibly good, a little bit of onion powder, looks like I've gotta refill both of these, and a little bit of paprika. Now I'm just gonna gently whisk this in and try to really get our chicken coated in these beautiful colors and flavors. You should almost get this nice light orange hue to the buttermilk here. And at that point, your chicken should have some nice seasoning. Obviously it has that pickle juice, that beautiful buttermilk. This just adds an extra level. Now we'll hop on over to our dredge. We're gonna go in with a half cup of all-purpose flour, as well as a full cup of either cornstarch or potato starch. I'm going with potato starch. Then I'm just gonna whisk this up and get it nice and well combined, at which point I'll add a nice sprinkle of salt, as well as the trick to get those extra little crispy bits that you see on a Popeye's piece of fried chicken. And that's adding just two to three tablespoons of our buttermilk liquid into that dredge. Now, when we whisk this up, you should have all these really nice clumps that are gonna stick to the edge of that chicken and make those crispy edges when you fry them. Just a simple extra step, yet it adds so much texture to the final product. Now, once we get that fryer hot, our chicken is ready to dredge. At this point, our buns are finally just about ready to cook. For now, with just about a tablespoon or two of water, we're gonna crack in one full egg to make our eggy, eggy wash wash. You already know we have to have an egg wash on top of these brioche buns to make that beautiful golden crust that we're all looking for here, right? So, once that egg is properly whisked here, we're gonna use our nice culinary paintbrush and gently paint over the top of each of our buns. I'm going with a lighter egg wash than typical today, as I'm very curious to see how the color changes based on whether our egg wash is just yolks, how much water's in there, etc. Ultimately, I'll find out what that perfect, perfect egg wash is, and I will report back to you. My job is essentially to do food research for you. Then you can take what looks good and make it, and you can watch and laugh at the stuff that doesn't look so good. I say it every time, so I'm gonna say it again because it's true. If you don't have one of these culinary paintbrushes, I'd go get one now. They're pretty fun. And they're one of those tools in the kitchen that I just absolutely love using each and every time I have to break it out. Now we've preheated our oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're gonna let these cook for about 15 to 18 minutes or so, or until they're golden brown and beautiful. Everyone's oven's different, so just make sure you keep an eye on those because after putting in all this work to these buns, you don't wanna come out with a bunch of black bricks. Let's send these off. And in go our beautiful, oh, our beautiful buns. While our bread is in the oven and we've begun to preheat our fryer, or if you don't have a fryer, just use a large Dutch oven or heavy bottom pot over your regular burner, it's time to dredge our chicken. One at a time, we're gonna pull out those beautiful, well-seasoned pieces of chicken Drop them and press them down into that flour and really make sure that they're nice and well coated. I'm happy here because I can already see that all those clumps are sticking to my chicken, but really press it down here and make sure that it's well coated, just like this. Once your chicken looks something like that, it should be ready to go ahead and fry. Try to use one hand to pull from the wet batter and one to dredge into dry. We'll do the same thing with the rest of our chicken until everything's complete. For frying our chicken, we're gonna do what I always do and double fry. First, we slowly drop in that chicken at 325 Fahrenheit, letting it gently rest at the bottom. I like to call this 
this part the actual cooking stage of the process, where your chicken is getting fully cooked and setting a little bit. We'll let this go for just a few minutes based on the thickness of our chicken, and then we'll fry again at 375 to get the full crisp. Once the chicken looks something like this, which I will say has those nice similar textures to a piece of Popeye's chicken, we're gonna let this rest off to the side while we heat our oil up to 375 Fahrenheit. We've reached 375 and it's all about that double fry. Let them bubble up and get crispy. Just a few minutes till they're golden brown. Once you've been going for a few minutes here, they should be beautifully golden brown, just like that. I gotta say guys, I think we might've nailed the Popeye's chicken. I'll place these down on my wire rack here and immediately hit them with some nice salt. What I like about the shape of these now is that the salt sticks really well between the chicken. Now, these are ready to go. Now that these shiny boys have come right out of the oven, we're just gonna let them sit and rest a little while to make sure they're cool off a bit for us to cut through them. But boy, oh boy, do they look soft. Hey, we're not filming, right? No. Okay, cool. Oh my God, these feel so good. So warm. <laughs> Now, sometimes I like to show you just the chicken itself when we fry it and it looks this good. This chicken right here is iconic. It's perfect. It's fat with a pH. You know what? I'm actually not gonna say anything else about it. Just watch and listen. I feel like this crisp factor is going to speak for itself. I don't have many words for this bun right here, other than the fact that it's gorgeous. I'm gently gonna slice through to cut this beautiful boy open. That right there is a gorgeous, amazing bun. To start building our sandwich, we're gonna go down with some of that aioli here, spreading it generously around our bun to make sure that there's plenty to go around. I'm a big fan of having lots of aioli. It's one of those things that just tastes so darn good and it never hurts to just add a little bit more. Now what I noticed about Popeyes is that they put it on the top and the bottom of their buns, which I absolutely respect. So I'm gonna do the same. That's a good non-lazy move there by Popeyes. Next, of course, we're gonna put in our piece of chicken and I smile as I hold this thing because at the end of the day, I'm really proud of it. The color is off the charts. The salt has stuck perfectly to those last bits of oil that clung on after we pulled it right out of the fryer. It's crispy, it's beautiful. It is the perfect piece of fried chicken. We'll place that right gently down on our bun. And then feel free to stop me here if this is a weird move, but we'll place the pickles down on top. I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys. These today are not homemade pickles. And yes, I'm ashamed, but I wanna be transparent. They're not homemade. And sometimes I guess that's okay. Like I said, I didn't know the Popeyes was gonna be so far away and we only have so much time in the day. Once our beautiful Popeyes sandwich is almost assembled, we'll place the bun across the top and there you have it. The perfect Popeyes classic crispy chicken sandwich. I feel like our sandwich here really speaks for itself. It's utterly perfect. And holding these side to side, I feel like we did a really good job perfectly mirroring that Popeye's chicken. I mean, their flakes are definitely a little bit lighter, but I actually like the way ours turned out. Now, of course, when it comes down to it, there's only one way to find out who the true winner is. First, we try Popeye's. I just noticed there's herbs in their crust. There are herbs in their batter. And I can't ever show you this because they are ever so small and I don't know what they are. I don't know if they're supposed to be there. A little weird, never seen that before. Let's give this a try. I'm sorry for talking with food in my mouth, but it's a true classic. I don't know what it is about Popeyes, but I know it's good. I mean, it's real good. The seasoning is on point. The crispiness, buns, eh, mediocre, but good. And they don't seem to toast the buns, which is why I didn't either. And I actually sometimes like the light fluffiness and that kind of carelessness when it comes to putting together a sandwich like this. It's really tasty. And it's so light and fluffy on the inside there with each bite. Plus, we already have the crispiness from the chicken and all the butter we need in that brioche, so it's fine. Popeyes definitely gets the win over Chick-fil-A, but that's not what we're looking at today. We're looking at who gets the win between Popeyes and us. To start, let's push that sandwich down. Oh baby, that looks good. Things might get a little bit messy here. Whoa, that's really good. I mean, that is really good. As I look inside my sandwich here, I see the juice coming out of the chicken. It is so, so crunchy. And that aioli, while simple, is taken up a whole nother level. In fact, we've introduced something to our sandwich here that Popeyes unfortunately doesn't have, and that's acid. Just a little bit of lemon zest is all it took to bring it from here to here. You know, if you don't believe me and you wanna just see what I mean by that, next time you order Popeyes or Chick-fil-A or whatever crispy chicken sandwich you might get, shave a little bit of lemon zest on there. That's all I ask. See what that does to the sandwich. Maybe it won't be for you, but I think it will. I was a little bit worried today, to be honest, but I think we beat out Popeyes on this one. The sandwich is simply a dream come true. I love you. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. And if you do, congratulations on joining this food gang. But don't forget to hit those notifications as well. And I'm talking to a lot of you who I know watch the videos, but might not be part of the notifications gang yet. What are you doing? I'm going to finish up probably the best crispy chicken sandwich that I've ever made. And I'll probably eat all these buns as well because they're so darn good. But I'll see you next time.